Conroy. Ain't you about due for a good retreading? Near as I can recollect, you're about wore down to the fabric. Uh, Admiral, check them for you. I can't now, Lom. I'm busy. What I'm interested in are groceries. Oh, yeah. There's five pounds of sugar, can of hominy, a box of crackers. Morning, Lom. Hey, hi, Earl. Morning, Miss Pomeroy. Morning, Earl. Morning, Abner. Ma says you wanted to see me about the draft. Oh, yeah. I want to get you to fill out one of these occupation cards here so that I can classify you. I ain't had no occupation, no. That's right. As far as I know, you ain't never done a lick of work in your whole life. Still, I sort of hate to put loafer down there. Feared you might wind up in the bakery. <laughs> you mean I won't have to go in the Army then? No, sir. I want you to get out here and get yourself a job so as I can draft you right out of it. Okay, Abner. And another thing, don't stick your hand in that apple barrel on the way out, neither. Don't need to. Got one on the way in. Yeah, little farmer. I see, that's 60. You never take the tomatoes. That's 10 off. That's down to 50 off. Some more says all. I know that's right. And you add the 9. That makes 59. Plus 1 is 69. And 10 is 79 points. I hope you don't mind at the tour now, but my young un got a hold of my rationing book. Well, you'll have to take that up with the rationing board then. Uh-oh, here comes trouble. Oh, well, how do you do, Abner? Well, I can tell from a tone of your voice there's something wrong. What's the trouble? Well, my little boy tore these stamps out of my rationing book. Here's like I was four. He does it every time my back's turned. I just don't know what I'm gonna do with that boy. Well, I know what I'd do if he'd turn his back to me. But if I was you, I believe I'd make a magician out of him. A magician? Yeah, I've been keeping track here, and according to my figures, he's tore nine more stamps out of the book this month than you had to start with. No. Er, no, no, my mistake. Yes? Ten. <laughs> All right, Granny, you've done good, Abner. Yeah, be quiet, Mom, be quiet. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. First, let me... Who's that? It's, uh... This is Chester W. Marshall, head he of the CAITWE. Today, my message is to the common man. It is more than a message. It is an appeal for you, the common man, to cooperate with us in this vital search for new ideas and inventions. Inventions? Did you hear that? Yeah, I hear it. Today, our appeal is to you. As you know, many of our greatest discoveries were not the results of long, strenuous laboratory work and research, but were stumbled on by accident. I dog is I bound you, I can invent something that'll make Pine Ridge famous. If you do, it'll be an accident, I'll guarantee you that. That something was done by men like you, and you, and you. Men from Vermont, Utah, Maine, Kentucky, California. He left Our out Arkansas. Why, of course he did. Let's dig into history and notable discoveries that were made. Take Isaac Newton. Mom, you've heard of Isaac Newton's. No, I've heard of Fig Newton's. Now, this is Isaac. Uh, one day he was sitting out under an apple tree, and an apple fell down and accidental hit him on top of the head. Accidental hit him, mind you. And after that, he had gravities. And a knot on his head. Yeah. And then there was Benjamin Franklin. Oh, Abner, he quit listening to that criddle prattle and pish posh. First thing you know, you'll be starting out on another one of your inventing sprees. Good morning, love. Good morning, Aunt Charity. Oh, yes, you called up about getting some extra gasoline. My dog is I'm going back here where I won't be interrupted. I'm sorry, Aunt Charity, but this ain't a black market. I'm feared I can't authorize no extra gas less than it's for essential use. But, Lum, this is essential. Not driving clean out to your daughter's place, ain't it? But, Lum, I just became a new grandmother. You did? Well, good for you. Six pounds, eight ounces. A boy! Oh, well, that's essential. Grannies, we ought to be able to figure something out of that. <laughs> You can't ration babies, you know. They never have before, Lum. <laughs> Wait a minute, I've got an idea. Yeah, I just happened to think, I need a new fire watcher out near your daughter's place, and that'll give you just enough gasoline to get to your post. Thank you, Lum. And I want you to report for duty tonight with full equipment. A pocket full of safety pins. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh just a minute. Here, take off your hat. This ought to do it. 
Yeah, there. <laughs> Thank you, love. <laughs> oh, here. Here's your old hat. Or, I mean, your <laughs> other hat. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mom. Thank you. Life without the many conveniences invented by the common man would not be worth living. Ideas are valuable, so don't let them get away from you. And I say to you, the common man, no matter what you have, little or big, work on it. When are you still listening to that if thing? You have be quiet, Get it now. to me somehow. You will find that I am the one man in Washington who is easy to see. This is Chester W. Marshall of the CAITWE signing off. Well, I got a lot of inventing to do, Lon. If you want me, I'll be back here. Well, now, don't blow up the place like you done once before. Abner, come on home. It's two hours past closing time now. I can't leave till this stuff gets done cooking. What is that junk you're mixing up? Oh, nothing. Just a pot of dynamite. Dynamite? Don't jar me that way, Lum. This stuff is liable to explode. It's a dangerous. I wish now I hadn't even mixed it up. Well, well, throw it out. Throw it out? I wouldn't even carry that stuff out, Lum. Well, how do you aim to get shut of it? I'm just hoping it'll boil away. Now, look, Abner, you know I think the world and all of you love to encourage you in whatever you're doing, but you're just carrying this inventing too far. Oh, sassy fast. Sassy fast. Well, yeah, you're going to bankrupt us, bringing stuff out of the store back here and mixing it up and wasting it. Don't do that. Now, this stuff here, for instance, what is that? Oh, that's just some uh, synthetic licorice I made up. But it never turned out very good, Lum. You can't chew it. It's too stretchy. I see there. Brung it out of the store and just ruined it. I never brung it out of the store. I made that out of sweet gum and stretch berries and tar and stuff. All right, Grannies, wait a minute, Abner. I believe we've got something here. Huh? Buddy? Oh, come in, Gomer. You have some more of that stuff you call licorice? You mean that you could actually eat that stuff? No, I made slingshots out of it. This one here is just a marble father than any one I ever had. Oh. Let's see that thing, Sonny. Grand Fappy Spears, he made some snake gutters out of it. And Cedric, he made some suspenders. Everything I make turns out wrong. Sleeve garters and galaxies, huh? Yeah, shoot it. Oh, I ain't got nothing to shoot with. Here's a rock, shoot it. Oh, I don't know much about working these things. How do you do it? Just pull it back and let it go. Like that, huh? Yeah. What's all we're shooting for? My granny's what I have this thing loaded with anyway. I don't know, but I'm gonna get out of here. Hey, you hurt, Mom? I don't think so, Abner. I cross my heart and promise I'll never try to invent nothing else as long as I live. Well, you don't have to. You've done invented it. That's the greatest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> it was a right smart explosion, weren't it? <laughs> oh, well, I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about this stuff right here. We've got to get some of this to that Mr. Marshall in Washington. Mom, he ain't got time to sit around and eat licorice. This ain't licorice, you idiot. That's synthetic rubber. Looky here. No good, huh? No good. It ought to make national heroes out of us. You mean we can make money out of that? Well, it ain't the money that counts, Abner. It's being patriotic and working for the government. That's the important thing right now. Come on, we're going to Washington. Going to Washington? Why, sure. Abner, I believe I see a chance to realize a lifelong ambition. Be one of them dollar-a-year men. Is that a steady salary? Oh, for goodness sake. Hello, got him down store. Mildred Spears are doing the talking. No. Uh, no. No, I'm the proprietor here. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, I'm not the actual proprietor. No. Uh, they're going to Washington, and I'm going to run the store for them while they're gone. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. All right. Oh, mummy did a life can't. Well, Lum, that's a nice suit you got on there. You like it, huh? I sure do. I never got no cuffs on the britches, but I got a baseball mitt. <laughs> now, Grandpap, you sure you're going to be able to look after the store for us while we're gone? Why, sure. I'll run this pigeon toed store like it ain't never been run before. Yeah, that's what we're afeard of. Now, you sure you understand all about the point system? Oh, yes, yes. If they want cheese and crackers, a point over there. If they want dress goods, a point over there. <laughs> What's that? Well, 
that's all the town folks. They hear you're going to Washington, and they come down to give you a big shindle. Well, good for them. Come on, Abner, we gotta get going. as I look out amongst all these familiar faces. Oh. <laughs> you know, Pine Ridge has always been a small town, but I grant you from now on, you watch her grow. <laughs> you see, it'll be no burn wide as the birthplace of them two famous inventors, me and Abner. <laughs> Why, tourists will be flocking in here from everywhere to see where we uh, lived and ate and, and done other historic things. <laughs> Someday, when we get back from Washington, folks will more likely say, Slum and Abner slept here. <laughs> Luke, you're gonna have to enlarge your lunchroom. <laughs> and Mose, you're gonna have to get another chair for your barbershop. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> Abner, put down that sign and come on up here. Fifteen, we better get started. Yeah, well, where's the samples of my synthetic rubber? Right here. Oh, oh, well, don't worry, folks. When we get back from Washington, we'll have tar for all of us. <laughs> and we ain't gonna let it go to our heads, neither. We're coming home speaking to you, same as always. <laughs> Reminds me of the year the locusts come through Pine Ridge. <laughs> so this is Washington. It's a heap bigger than I thought it'd be, Long. <laughs> well, this ain't all of it, silly. This is just the depot. Oh, well, are we going to stay out at Mr. Marshall's house? No, I don't think we better try to put up at their place, Abner. It'd be a lot of bother to Ms. Marshall. We just get a room at a hotel or something. Well, how are we going to see Mr. Marshall, then? Well, he's more than likely got office downtown. Oh. Want a red cap? Huh? Hey, he's supposed to wear a red cap here in Washington? He ain't trying to sell you a cap. He's talking about himself. He wants us to buy him a cap? Oh, Abner, quit being such country. Why don't you act like I do? Well, let him buy his own cap. We got to get up to see Mr. Marshall. Mr. Marshall? You mean that direct up stuff? Yeah, see, I want to see him about my synthetic rubber invention. All I put in is just some sweet gum and... Abner, for goodness sake, come here. Don't be telling all that stuff. That's a secret formula. Understand? Oh, yeah, yeah. Red cap? Is he going to start that all over again? Uh, where is Mr. Marshall's office? I don't know, sir. Who is Mr. Marshall? Well, you just now told us he's director of stuff. I, I never said nothing. I just said red cap. He must be a little tech, long. Well, where can we get a room? Or is there a YMCA in this town? YMCA? There's a WPA, an OWA, NRA, and an AAA. But I ain't never yet to know YMCA. Well, YMCA civilian. Civilian? Here in Washington? You better try the morgue or the museum. Uh oh, here comes them locusts again, Bob. I hear you, gentlemen, correctly. You want a room? Here? <laughs> Are you kidding? Well, it don't have to be a very big one. We will have some choice vacancies right after the armistice is signed. Yeah, we wait. Come on. Sorry, gentlemen. You might try Mrs. Hubbard's boarding house. She has a single bed with only one man in it. Oh, come on, Abby. Just a minute. I might have something at that. I reckon he's seen we had somebody important. <laughs> Good for him. <laughs> This way, please. You can see 
to yourself, gentlemen. Everything is taken. I'm sorry, gentlemen, so sorry. You mean the elevator CO2? Yes, there's an ambassador and a brigadier general in there. Well, what about that chair over there in the lobby? The chair? Uh, did you wire for a reservation? No. Did we, Lawrence? No. Well, well, wait a minute. There's a boarding house over on E Street. It's just possible she may have something. Uh, get me Mrs. McLean's boarding house. I hope you'll like it over there if she has something. You'll find it's nice and clean over there, yes. Uh, hello, Mrs. McLean? Uh, this is the clerk at the Golf Hotel. Happen to have a vacancy for tonight? You do? In the basement? No, the furnace won't bother. No, windows are not necessary. <laughs> no, no. No, no, who wants spring? <laughs> <laughs> Will you hold it? I'll take care of it. But she's going to hold it. Oh. We finally got it. Well, so long, gentlemen. I finally got a room for myself tonight. Here's a bench here, Abner. Oh. Oh. There's a room for rent right there, Lom. I know where they're at. I can read. Oh. See anything? No. Lom, why don't we go on back to Pine Ridge and mail the rubber? We ain't never gonna get a place to sleep here. Well, we're gonna sleep right here on the bench. Huh? Here. I don't want to read, Lom. Well, I don't want you to read it. Use it for a cover. Here, put it under your coat like this. Well, ain't room for both of us to sleep on this bench. Well, we ain't both gonna sleep on it. Look, Abner, you've been carrying that big heavy valise all day. I'm going to let you have the lower tonight. I'll take the upper. Well, that's mighty <laughs> thought it. You mean here? Yeah. Oh. think you're doing here? Oh, howdy, Constable. Why, are we just sort of sleeping here on the beach? Uh, he is, I am. Oh, you are, are you? Where are your priorities? You fellas mind shutting up so we can sleep? All right, boys, break it up, break it up. Move along. And you two, on your way. And all the rest of you fellas back there. Come on, get up. Move along, boys. Move along. You can't block up the traffic here. Get going. You can't sleep here. Are you in the market for a good soft bed tonight, friends? We wouldn't have a room to put it in if we had one. Room goes with it, brother. You mean you got a room with a bed in it? You pipe down. The cops are liable to hear you. This is the real genuine article. Pre-war springs, all wool blankets, and brand new sheets. What do you say, okay? Well, sure, lead us to it. I mean, right <laughs> this way, you can see it's the best bed you've ever slept in, men. That's what they all say. That's You guys were lucky to run into me. I could have rented this place a thousand times, but I wouldn't give this room to everybody. No, sirree. I've been saving it for two guys just like you. There it is. Now, if you want anything during the night, just wrap on the floor. Me and my wife are right downstairs. We'll hear you. We'll be right on the job. Go right in, man. How's Danny's look, Abner? What is it? It's a bed. A bed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, friends. Here you are. Here you are. And it'll only set you back eight bucks. Eight bucks? That's a little steep, ain't it? Take it or leave it, neighbor. Take it or leave it. It ain't hard for me to find customers these days. Oh, no, wait a minute. We'll take yeah, it. Yeah, take it, Lom. Now, remember, you've got to be out of here by 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. So you better hit the hay right now. And no noise and no light. No light? That's the dim-out regulation, my friend. Has nothing to do with me. Oh. If you want this room tomorrow night, I'll meet you in the park at the same time. And thanks a lot, friend. <laughs> thanks. Not at all. All right, no. Yeah, me too, Abner. I'm more to a frazzle. More to a frazzle. <sighs> Abner, are you awake? Yeah, I'm awake. But I'm too tired and lazy to get up.
night's sleep. Yeah. You ought to see that fella and rent this room again tonight. Yeah, yeah, this is fine a bed as I ever slept in. Hey, we're supposed to be out of here by 6 o'clock. What time is it? I don't know. I'll see. It's 8.30 right now. 8.30? Yeah, he sure give us a room with some big windows in it. Wait a minute. Who are all them peeping toms out there? Get up and pull down the shade, Lom. I ain't going to do it. Get up yourself. Now, go on, Lom. I ain't going to get out there in front of all them people. What are you doing in here? What are you doing in here? Yeah, we paid $8 for this room. Get out of here. Room? Why, you're in my show window. Show window. Wait a minute. Who rented this room to you with you? A little short fellow with big eyes? Yeah. That's what I thought. My night watchman. Now, come on, get out. Next time you want to sleep, don't use my window. We have enough dummies. I'll have the police look into this. Miss Parrish, you phone them. Yes, sir. Hold on there, son. You can't do that to these fellows. Son? Well, Bob, how in the world are you? Yes. How are you, Mr. Edwards? Glad to see you, Mr. Peabody. Do you sleep here, too, Robert? What's going on here? You know who these gentlemen are? I don't even know who you are. Robert Blevin. A battalion? That's right. I want to apologize. You see, in the window with the night shirts on and everything, that got me out of bed. Thanks, old man. Now, if you show these gentlemen to the voice room, I'll call a cab. Yes, sir. Right this way, gentlemen. Ah, not that way, that's the ladies. Right this way, please. Where to, Mr. Blevin? My home, Betty. Yes, sir. That's your new girl up there, Robert? Oh, no, Abner. What did you call her Betty for, then? Well, that's her name, silly. Oh. <laughs> We've been hearing about what uncommon success you made out of yourself, Robert. We're mighty proud of you. Well, if you write enough mean things in your newspaper column, a few people finally get to know you. Your mama told us to look you up, but we never quite figured we'd run into you the way we did. <laughs> yeah. I reckon we look sort of backwards. He's falling for that stuff back there in that show window. Oh, don't let that bother you. My place may not be quite as glamorous as the department store window, but it'd be a lot more private. <laughs> well, I hope we just ain't crowding you. Crowding? Listen, in this town, men die of loneliness if there's less than six in a room. <laughs> well, we won't be here long. We're going back home as soon as we see Mr. Marshall. Marshall? Wait a minute. Is that the reason you're here? Are you answering the call to the common man, too? Two? Is there some others ahead of us? Well, one or two. Thousand. What have you invented? A submarine that folds up and hides in the seaweed? No, all we got is synthetic rubber. Oh, that's all. Synthetic rubber. Yeah, see, I'll make it out of a sweet gum. Abner, shut up. Uh huh? I told you that's a secret formula. I want nobody but you to know about it. Oh, well, yeah, that's right. Spies and stuff, you know. Yeah. Uh, Robert, maybe you could direct us to Mr. Marshall's office. I'll do better than that. I'll take you there myself. Maybe I can sneak you in ahead of the mob. Well. You see, his secretary is, uh, well, she's a girlfriend of mine. <laughs> oh, she is? <laughs> she doesn't quite see eye to eye with that point of view, but then what does a woman know of such things? <laughs> Betty, drop us at the Octagon and take the bags to my home. Yes, sir. Look out, look out, look out. And when he pulls this other string, the parachute starts back up in the air again. Now, my invention here, it only looks like a pencil sharp, but actually, it's a vest pocket machine gun. And my invention, sir, is a hair restore. A what? A hair restore. All you have to do is put a little on your hair like that and rub it together and put it over the ball spot there. Hey, cover yourself head. up. Cover yourself up. Hey, 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 there are people in Mr. Marshall's office now, and as soon as he finishes with them, I'll send more of you in. Now, will you please sit down and wait? Yes, yes sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Marshall. Yes, Mr. Marshall. Now, will you please sit down? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now. Now, just a minute. 
one at a time. All right, you. What? You, you, you tell your boss I've got a smokeless smoke. A what? A, a smokeless smoke. Uh, when the enemy bombers come over a factory, they, 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 they won't think, they see, don't see any smoke coming out of the chimneys, and they'll think that, uh, that, 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 uh, that the uh, factory's empty and, uh, and not worth bombing, see? Sounds very interesting, but you'll have to wait your turn. Yes, ma'am. All right, you're next. This can't wait, miss. The army needs it. Elephant tablets. What did you say? Elephant tablets give the soldiers a memory of an elephant. Can't forget a thing. Absolutely harmless, too. Oh, that's wonderful. But what's in them? <laughs> I don't remember. Maybe you'd better take some yourself. <laughs> Maybe I should. I I'm next. I'm next. Uh, I have a wonderful invention here, and I'm sure that uh, Mr. Uh, Marshall. Uh, Marshall will be interested. Gas mask for a carrier pigeon. Yes, I know. Gas mask for a carrier pigeon. Will you please sit down? Oh, pickle. The other side. Oh, it's you. Hello, Jamie. Mr. Peabody and Mr. Edwards from my hometown. Glad to know you. Proud to make your acquaintance. And I want to see your boss at once. I admire your nerve, Bob Levins, coming in here today. Well, I'm glad you found something about me to admire. Miss Ness is one of my more uh, reluctant fans. Why do you keep baiting him in that column of yours? Why don't you let him alone? Your boss, whatever I've said about him is completely true. Do you call this true? Washington may have been something of a madhouse in the past. But since Mr. Marshall called upon the country's common man to help him win the war, it has become an absolute paradise of paranoics. Is that good or bad? Well, it isn't good. Jamie, how about slipping my pals in? I'm sorry, but they'll have to wait their turn just like all the others. Especially if they're your pals. Yes? Yes, sir. 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 She's not always as friendly to me. So that's the young lady that's supposed to be in love with you, huh? That's right. She acts more like you're done married. We're going to have to rent here. You turn your pocket by putting in the left pocket and your coat pocket has Mr. Marshall thinks your ideas are all splendid, but he would like to have time to think them over carefully. We'll call you. Don't forget. Are there many more out there? Well, a few. Quite a few. Have you read young Beaven's column today? Levin. An absolute paradise of paranoia. Oh, I wouldn't pay any attention to that drivel. Marshall's common man plan boomerang. Little man's champion creates Frankenstein. They're all after me. Miss Nesta, what do you think, honestly? Well, if I were you, I would try uh, to... Maybe uh, I am handling it all wrong. Maybe... Oh, I don't know. Perhaps if you were to... But I'm not Lick Chet. I still put my faith in the common man. That's why I had Bergstein make that symbolic statue of him. He'll come through with our greatest discovery yet. Shall I send in some more inventors? No, oh, send me in something for my headache. Well, there's a man out there who makes headache pills. Please. I want to be alone. Mr. Marshall's office. Who's calling? The invisible man? Sorry, Mr. Marshall can't see him. Will you please get off my desk and leave Mr. Marshall alone? Don't you think you're carrying this business of being loyal to your employer a little too far, honey? Why don't you forget him and have dinner with me tonight? I'm not having dinner tonight. If you don't eat, you'll get skipped. And you won't love me. A hard woman. I don't know what I see in you. You know what you're forcing me to do? No. Dine with a congressman from the Midwest. The talk will be all about corn. Oh, we should find plenty of material for your column. Uh oh I'll see you at seven. When are we going to get into scene? By Christmas, if a present mood holds. Well, don't worry about it, fellas. I'll arrange it somehow. Well, I got to get back to the office. In the meantime, you might do a little exploring. Exploring? Yeah, that's right. You might drop in on the Senate and watch them make a few new laws. New laws? I dog is have we used up all the old ones? Oh, for pity's sake. <laughs> You know, Abner, I could stand here and look at it all day long. Yes, sir, I believe that's the biggest building I've ever seen. Well, I ain't talking about the size of it. I mean, what it stands for. Oh. There's a capital of the greatest nation on this earth. Yeah, yeah. The feller can't look at it long without thinking about the hardships and the sacrifices our forefathers made to make all this possible. No. Six statesmen is Washington and Hamilton. Jefferson. So that's a Lincoln Memorial, huh? Yeah, one of the greatest statesmen of them all. His ideals are the very principles this country was founded on. The principles we're fighting so hard to preserve right now. 
that this nation, under God, shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, and for the people, shall not perish. There's another inspiring sight, Abner. Washington's Monument. Is that a statue of Washington? It ain't a statue of him, it's a monument to him. Oh, well, I was gonna say that never looked a oh, thing. Oh, now, I know what you're gonna say, and it's silly. Oh. Uh, seeing the Senate actually at work like we did today is something else every citizen ought to do. Some right interesting stuff said there. Yeah, uh, Lom, guess what did they say? I never could keep up with what they was talking about. Couldn't you follow that? No, I jumped the track there summer. <laughs> well, they was a pint in a big investigating committee to investigate the investigating committee that the House of Inquiry appointed yesterday. Ah. Uh -huh. Wait a minute, there's a bench. Let's sit down a while, Abner. I'm just wore to a frazzle. Oh, yeah. Wore to a frazzle. I would be derelict in my duty to the citizens of my state if I didn't do something about the situation. But I'm helpless. Helpless. You say the soil is completely arid? What wasn't blown away in 38 is now parched by last year's drought. Gone so far that even crop rotation doesn't help. Still, my bill for reclamation gets nowhere. I'm at my wit's end. I sympathize with you, Senator. I know exactly how you feel. They tell me that if I could find a cheap way of having it done... Worms will do it cheap, Senator. Were you talking to me, sir? Yeah, I say if you had worms. If I had worms? Well, he don't mean you personal. He means in the soil. See, they make the ground good for growing stuff. Earthworms do that? Why, sure. Yeah, you've got a special kind of worm you can get. You can either buy the worm itself or the eggs. Uh, we had a drought down there in Pine Ridge a few years back, and, well, worms practical saved their lives, what they done. <laughs> Dead right, Abby. Yeah, <laughs> well, Al Potter's still raising them. Yeah? Why, this is very interesting. But worms injure the delicate roots, don't they? No, not these, do See, they're little red worms about that yeah, long. Yeah, and uh, besides making the ground good for planting, they sort of, well, plowed up as they dig through it, you know. Really? Yeah, you get a whole bucket full of them from Al for a quarter. <laughs> <laughs> but I have an entire state to take care of. Well, you'll need more than one bucket, then. And that, I'm afraid, would run into money. No, see, they, they breed pretty fast. Yeah, you just get yourself a... Mama and a papa worm, and before you can say Jack Robinson. Well, you no need to go into detail about that, Abner. Uh -huh. Well, this is splendid, gentlemen. I owe you a great debt of gratitude. Uh, goodbye, Congressman. See you later. Goodbye, Senator. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Not at all, Senator. Not at all. <laughs> uh, you say you're from a place called Pine Ridge? Uh, yes, sir. I gather that's a small town. Well, yeah, but the uh, biggest small town in the world, though, I'll say that for it. Might nigh as big as Cherry Hill right now. Huh? <laughs> Don't pay no attention to him, Congressman. Well, if you're from a small town, perhaps you can help me, too. Well, you'll be proud to try. What's your trouble? I have rather a grave problem. The draft has taken many young men from our rural communities, and the men and women left behind are migrating to the large production centers because of wartime wages. Natural, natural. The result is a great many of our small cities are becoming ghost towns. Well, sir, now we was faced with my, uh, that same problem down there at home, wasn't we, Abner? Why, well, sure. You, you were? Well, tell me, what did you do? Well, the first thing we done, we appointed a committee to sort of look into the matter. And we found, whilst they could make more money working in the city, they... They could live a heap cheaper in Pine Ridge. So we called a meeting of all the town's folks, and we gathered down there at the schoolhouse. And I got up, and I told them, I says, now, whilst I admire you for wanting to get out and work in the defense plants, you can do more real good towards winning the war by staying right here at home and raising farm products to help feed them folks that does have to do that kind of work. Yes, sir, he told him that. He sure did. I heard him. I said, well, I wasn't sitting no farther than hear that tree there from him when he said it right on one of the desks there in the front row of the schoolhouse. But he told him. He said, if you want my honest opinion. <laughs> That question had been worrying me for weeks. And they had an immediate solution. They'll probably be on that same bench this afternoon, if they don't have to keep a certain appointment. Earthworms, they told me. And I've had some research done, and they were dead right. Solved my problem for me quickly and inexpensively. 
Oh, they were on a park bench just off the tidal beach. That's right. Yes, that's right. Senator Baker said we're the smartest men in Washington. Okay, meet me there at once. That about takes care of your case, all right. I should say it does. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Not at all. Not at all. Did he forget to thank us? No, he done it. Oh. Next. Sorry, Judge. You stepped out of line. And lost your place. But I just stepped over to the courthouse for a moment. Well, that ain't no excuse. You'll have to get at the end of the line. We can't show no favor right. Next. <laughs> this is a pleasure, sir, I assure you. <laughs> yes, sir. Now, uh, oh, I beg your pardon, sir. This is a pleasure, I assure you. Yeah, uh, what's your trouble? Well, my problem, sir, they're discussing it all over Washington. As a matter of fact, uh... Well, I'm glad I ran into you, Janie. I've got something here for your boss. Now, to the untrained eye, this looks like an ordinary tray. But actually, it's what the country needs, a dehydrated jukebox. All you do is add water, and you get K Kaiser. <laughs> oh, be quiet, Bob. That sounds more like the old Jane. Old Jane is right. You know, you ought to go away for a while. Like, say, on a nice honeymoon with a pleasant young newspaper man. Mm, that would be fine. But I don't know any pleasant young newspaper man. I used to, but he's gone into the poison pen business. No, seriously, Bob, just what do you have against Mr. Marshall? I haven't got anything against him. I love him. He's wonderful copy. I just don't get what he's doing, that's all. He's doing his job aiding the war effort. Oh, Frittle Pratt. What? Frittle Pratt. That's the Pine Ridge version of Hooey. Well, you think Mr. Marshall's work is so Frittle Prattish. Why are you so interested in getting your Pine Ridge friends in to see him? I want them to find out they haven't got anything and go home. But they might have something. That's the whole point. Listen, Janie. Marshall's office was created as a clearinghouse for good, sound, scientific discovery. But he's made a campaign out of it. He wants to win the war with Mrs. O'Reilly's machine gun made out of an egg beater and a couple of corset staves. Well, then just how do you propose that he do this job? First thing he ought to do is get some advice from those two fellows on the park bench. Lum Edwards and Abner Peabody. Haven't you heard? All of Washington is sitting at their feet, begging for wisdom and getting it, too. You mean those two are giving out advice? Yes, and it's not bad, either. Some good, earthy, forthright stuff. So when Mr. Marshall wants to... I can just see Mr. Marshall going to your friends for advice. All right, don't crowd, don't get out of line. But when you get your chance on the bench, state your case brief and then leave, understand? Leastways, that's the way me and Abner handled the same situation down Pine Ridge, and it kept prices down, too. Now, why couldn't we have thought of that? <laughs> I'm grateful. Not at all, not at all. Mom, we've been trying to get in to see that fella for two or three days about that rubber. If we don't get in that office today, I'm going to break in. All right, Abner, all right. Now, gentlemen, my case is not an agrarian one, but I think you may be able to help. One o'clock. Eh? Hey? It's one o'clock, past closing time. Yeah, but I'll only be a moment. Now, we got to go over this new big building and see a big man. But the octagon, I'm going over there. We can talk as we walk. Hey, we ain't got time to talk now. We got to see an important fella. Yeah, but this is we'll roughly what I'm up against. It's eight o'clock in the morning. But surely, if we're going in the same direction. We are thinking about something else now. We got to concentrate on rubber. Come yeah, on, but, but gentlemen, this is my case in a nutshell. <laughs> yes, but gentlemen, if you'll just let me state my problem, I'll wait till the morning for the answer. Just as long as you let me unburden myself. Tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock, you can unburden yourself all you want to. Right now, we got a burden of our own. You still got it, ain't you, Abner? Yeah, burden safe. I yeah, but the whole problem will be settled if you only let me talk. Listen, gentlemen, here's my office. Won't you just step inside for a moment and rest? No, we got to go a couple of doors down the way. We'll get plenty of rest waiting to see this fella. Uh, you ain't got no cold drinking water in that hangout, have you? Yes, indeed. The best drinking water in the world. Come on, come on in, boys. Oh, do goodness. He can get hungry and thirsty at this the best time. None of that local stuff comes way down from the mountain. Great big job. 
Now, here's my case in a nutshell. Hurry up, Abner. Let's don't miss a chance to get in and see that feller. Say, uh, how do you get into that feller's office in Washington? No one's ever been able to find out. Now, here's my case in a nutshell. He ought to know it's not me important, so we wouldn't have come all the way up here to see him. He must not be very bright. Yeah, there are a lot of those guys, but we're weeding them out. Now, here's my case in a nutshell. to weed him out, too. Get somebody in there that knows something. Yeah, yeah, but they, they, they will, they will. Now, here's my case come in a nutshell. Come oh. no, no, but don't go yet. I haven't said to my nutshell yet. See you in the morning. Yeah, don't go. Let me take a second, Hall. Goodbye. Uh, elastic Chief? No. That sure was a determined feller. <laughs> My granny's that must be Mr. Marshall. Come on. Wait hey, a minute, you're you the can't very fellow. You changed your mind, eh? I knew you would. Now listen, this is my case well, in a nutshell. This way, now, Mr. I believe Marshall, Abner was back in the field trying to make some kind of sense that he could Just a minute, just a minute. Just talk one at a time. Thank you. Now, as I said, if you leave it up to the public and try to make some clue with something that I might have, I'm sure enough, I'm sure enough, I'm sure enough, I'm sure as I was saying, what we need is something that will really help the war effort. Something, something good that doesn't use priority, something like synthetic rubber or... Well, or that's what we've been trying to tell you. That's what yeah. we've got. That, that's what I was saying, you see. Something that, that... What did you say? We've got it right here in this bag, invented by me, a common man. <laughs> I'm vindicated. I'm vindicated. Oh, that's too bad. I knew the common man would come through. I knew he wouldn't let me down. Well, he's common, all right. <laughs> I cast my bread upon the board and he comes back rubber. Rubber! Gentlemen, if this is genuine synthetic rubber, they'll put busts of you in the Smithsonian Institute. Oh, oh no, you don't. You ain't gonna put me in no institution. Come on, Wait Mom. a minute, Abner. I want to be a bust. Ah. <laughs> uh. In spite of the announcements coming from Mr. Marshall's office that he had discovered synthetic rubber, this reporter remains entirely skeptical. The so-called inventors from Pine Ridge are fine, well-meaning gentlemen, but they are not scientists. Therefore, it is hardly creditable that they have produced a truly synthetic rubber. It is this reporter's belief that Mr. Marshall's rubber party will bounce on him. That is the sort of idiotic, senseless remarks that I've been getting lately from some of the more intellectual members of the press. But today, it's my turn to give out with a few. Gentlemen, you shall now see with your own eyes the making of a truly synthetic rubber. A synthetic rubber invented by one of us, by one of the common men. By a common you got everything you need, Abner? I think so, and I'm still in a hot mom, it ain't boiling you. Maybe that electric pug ain't no count. Well, it might not be. It never seemed to fit very good. See if you can find another plug there somewhere. Yeah, let's see. There ought to be one around here somewhere. Yeah, yeah, here it is. Right here. Right here. Yeah. Oh, boy. Don't be. Take your hand off of that long man. Yeah. Come right there. Yeah, now we'll fix it. That's got it. Nor does this synthetic rubber require the use of any of the essential materials needed by our armed forces. No, it is made from the simple products of the field and farm. The products used every day by the average man. And when I think of the effort put forth by the common man of America in aiding the war effort, gentlemen, it warms my heart. And when I think of how my efforts have been ridiculed by the gentlemen of the press, when I think of the humiliation and shame that's been heaped upon my head, gentlemen, my blood boils. You know, I've been roasted from every angle. Some have even gone so far as to say that I'm half-baked. But that's all behind me now. Gentlemen, I repudiate the hot seat that you prepared for me. At last, we've got what we've been looking for. Uh, Miss Lester, will we have some air, please, here? And so, to sum it up briefly, synthetic rubber was not invented by a celebrated scientist, a chemist, or even a skilled technician, but by a plain, simple, honest, average man. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I give you a plain American from Pine Ridge, Arkansas, maybe the father of synthetic rubber, Mr. Abner Peabody. <laughs> Mr. Peabody. Abner. Is there a doctor here, please? Perhaps I can be of some help. Place him here in this chair, please. <laughs> he got walked by that statute. Is he all right, Doc? No indication of a fracture, not even a simple concussion. Can you hear me, sir? 
Yeah, sure, I can hear you. Then you can hear me. Well, how you be? How do you feel? Oh, fine, how are you? Well, then you, we can go ahead with it. Well, splendid now. Come on, anytime you're ready. How? Huh? Well, come on, you can't do nothing sitting there. Go on, get started. Well, come on, the rubber demonstration. We are waiting to see the synthetic rubber mix. Synthetic rubber? Yes. Yeah, I'd love to see that, too. Yes, sir. See, what's wrong with him? Well, he just ain't himself. I don't know who he is, but he ain't himself. What goes on, old timer? Huh? Oh, oh, oh well, howdy, Mr. Press. Miss Press. I told you, you brung the whole family. <laughs> now, listen, Abner. Down in front. Who is that long, slim drink of water, anyway? He knows who I am. Well, that's Lum Abner. Lum Abner, titching ain't set down. Quit trying to act so smart. These folks are here waiting to see the demonstrate. Well, I'm waiting to see it, too. Maybe we can if you'll sit down and get out of the way. Come on, bub. Let's get started. Bub? What's the matter with you, anyway? Amnesia. Amnesia? 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 Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Amnesia. 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 Hey, here, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where are we going? Where are we going? We're going to phone in one of the greatest stories in Washington. You've got amnesia. I've got what? Amnesia. You've lost your memory. Ah. Uh, all right, what's your name? It's, uh, uh, uh. B, you don't remember. What did you used to do? <laughs> I don't know. I might have been a toe dancer. <laughs> <laughs> you were never a jitterbug, were you, Uncle? What's that? We've got to cover that jitterbug contest tonight. How about taking Grandpa along for laughs? Yeah. What do you say, old timer? Uh, what is a jitterbug? You know, oh. shy. Oh, sure, yeah, lead out, lead wow. out. Why, sure. That's the boy. Yeah. That's the one. That's it. And now the whole country, the whole world will laugh at me. And look at that stuff. I don't even know what's in it. What have you found out? Sweet gum. Extract of licorice, I think. These other things, I don't know what they are until I take them to a laboratory and analyze them. Well, what are you waiting for? Take them along and analyze them. This is a national crisis. Yes, sir. And this is just as much your fault as anybody else's. Why didn't you let him tell you his formula? Oh, I figured it was a military secret. Yeah, I, I thought he ought to tell nobody but himself. In case of spies or fifth column. Ah, spies. Well, what are you hanging around for? Why aren't you back taking some more cracks at me in your column? Oh, dry up, sir. I'm worried about Abner Peabody, a good friend of mine. Hasn't that doctor finished his examination yet? Where are they all? Oh, why did I ever come to Washington? Why didn't I stay on my old job? Well, why didn't you? Because my country sent for me. Now, where have you been? On the telephone. With the president of the board, he said to tell you that... Yes? ...that you've made a fool of yourself. Giving you one week in which to find the rubber formula. A week? Oh, why did I ever give up my life? I'm in the groove. I'm cooking with gas right up on the front burner. Slip me a little skin, bud. I'm a ready city. I'm one A shore of the world. And ain't but one branch of the service I want. That's the Marine Corps. Abner. Oh, all right, they're filled up. I'll go into the paratrooper. What are you talking about, anyway? What's the matter, Grandpa? Don't you understand, Jive? I'm hip with helium. What are you, a square from Delaware? Square? Oh, you ain't hep, kid. That's your trouble. You ain't a gator. Why don't you go back in your corn crib and pull a shuck over yourself? Oh, for goodness sakes, Abner. Don't call me Abner. That ain't my name. What is your name? Buster V. Davenport. Buster V. Davenport? Yes, sir. Where'd you get a name like that? Right here on my underwear. Big initials. B, V, D. When are you gonna sign me up, kid? Pretty soon. Pretty soon. Well, you can't make it too soon for me. Oh, Mr. Davenport, uh... Now, I have to make a report on your physical condition to uh, my colleagues here. Would you mind waiting in the outer office? Well, all right, Sawbones, all right. There's a bunch of hep cats down here to get a bug join a jive, and I want to go down there and join them anyway. Cut myself a rug. And I mean cut it up into little pieces, kid. What are we going to do, Doc? Amnesia is a strange condition. Now, he could come out of it by himself. Sometimes. We can't wait. We've got to do something right away. Well, this is a very stringent method, but it has been known to work. Now, he lost his memory through a blow on the head. Now, another blow in the same locality no, might... No, 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 Doc. We couldn't do that. We might kill him. Yes, you might. Well, uh... Well, why not let him go back to his old hometown? A familiar faces and places might do the trick. Ah, uh, Granny, that's a good idea. All right, let's get it started right away. Find out about the trains, will you? Hey, kids, I just happened to recollect something. Well, good for you, Abner. 
Uh-uh, I know now what branch of the service I want to go into. The commandos. Well, we're all going back to Pine Ridge. You can join up back there. Well, I'll get to Luton and Snooton, Luton. Uh, I, I just sitting here studying, Mr. Marshall. Do you ever notice when you're riding along on a train this way, uh, how the trees and stuff down close to the train looks like they're going in this direction, and the scenery's way out yonder looks like they're going forward. <laughs> oh. Another thing that always sort of bothered me is, supposing there's a feller standing right here in the aisle and he wants to jump up in the air, would he come back down right where he jumped up at, or would the train sort of run out from under him and he'd come down back here? Down there. Uh, down here. You're listening, ain't you? Well, now, supposing he got up on top of the train, and, and it, it, this is a back car right here, and it's going 100 mile an hour in this direction. He's standing right here, and he jumped up in the air. Would he come back down on the back end of the car, or would he miss it and fall down here on the tracks and bust himself right over? I don't care. You mean you'd let him fall right down? Oh, I don't either. I, I don't even know the fellow. You don't seem to realize what this means to me. My whole future in Washington depends upon his getting his memory back and me getting that rubber formula. I don't want anything to jeopardize it. I take great pride in serving my country as a dollar a year man. Yeah, Granny, now there's something I've always wanted to be, is a dollar a year man. Aren't we getting the up Pine Ridge yet? Over two days on the train. You sure we haven't passed it? Oh, no, no, I know we ain't passed it. No, he honors Briar Creek. I'd know that anywhere. And he honors Rich Mount? Well, wake him up and tell him about some of these places. Uh, he always gets mad whenever I wake him up. Well, try it. Abner? Abner? Will you go off and lose yourself and quit bothering me when I'm trying to sleep? I don't want to talk to you, Grandpa. I don't dig your jive, kid. I just don't dig you. You see what I mean? Say, that uh, Rich Mountain is a pretty tall peak, ain't it? Oh, yeah, that's about the highest point, Twist the Appalachian. What did you say? I say that Rich Mountain is a pretty high peak, all right. How did you know that was Rich Mountain? You just now called it that when you was talking to him. Oh. Another thing, that feller on the end of the train would have bounced like rubber. Rubber? Rubber? Don't holler at me. Let me sleep. Hello, love. Well, Steve Reynolds, you old rascal. Welcome back to Pine Ridge. <laughs> howdy, Abner, howdy. Don't be calling me Abner. That's all I am here. Who is this yokel that thinks he knows me anyway? Well, you know Steve Reynolds runs the depot here. Never heard of him before in my whole life. Are you positive? Why, of course I am. How could I ever forget a fan like that? If it weren't for joining the commandos, I'd have never come to a hick town like this to start with. Abner's lost a spoke out of his wheel. What's that? Amnesia. Don't even know his own name. Oh. Look. Get me Aunt Charity Stairs. Abner lost his memory complete. Don't know who he is nor nothing. Lum said for everybody to bring their faces over to the store. Thinks maybe they'll help him to recollect. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking that maybe some of them faces would scare him into remembering. <laughs> yeah, mine's plum gone. And Lum says for everybody to get right over to the Jot'em Down store, right away. Yeah. Yeah. Because mine is blank. Blanker than usual. Well, I'll be right over. I said I'd be right over. Well, here you are, Mr. Davenport, right back in your own hometown. Right in your own store. Now, these people are all your friends. They all know you. Don't you recognize any of them? Homeless looking bunch of yard dogs I ever seen in my life. See here, Abner Peabody. How many times have I got to tell you my name's Buster V. Davenport? You want me to prove hey, it to you? Just a minute, Buster. What are we doing down here anyway? Looking for a Japanese spy? No, not well, exactly. Well, what are we doing? Quit stalling. Well, you know Aunt Charity Spears. I never seen that old woman. Why, before. you hold your temper. You better hold Pappy. She don't look like no Japanese spy. Or neither does old Billy Whiskers here. What'd you do with your circus, bud? What are you doing, playing hooky? What are you smiling about, kid? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's your man. There's a Japanese spy if I ever seen one. What's your name? Where do you live? What do you do? 
Where's your draft card? Don't stand there grinning at me, you Japanese man. Bring me a piece of rubber hose. I'll give him the third degree. Yeah, I thought that'd make you blink. You mean to say the chemical laboratory hasn't turned in that report yet? No, they haven't, Mr. Marshall. And oh, yes, there was something else I wanted to tell you. There have been some people here looking over your offices. Perhaps. Looking over my offices? Listen, you tell them I'm not finished yet. Yes, I know, but uh, I guess they're looking just in case. Yeah, well, there's still two more days to go on that week. And by the way, people here have been asking for Mr. Peabody and Mr. Edwards. Evidently, their advice is needed badly. I'm not interested in that. When you get that report, bring it along to Pine Ridge. Yes, sir, the very moment that I get it. Goodbye, Mr. Marshall. Sounds like he's in his usual dither. Oh, why don't you let up on him? How well have you come and work for me? Me take your dictation? You don't need a secretary to help you turn out that column. What you need is a gremlin. Domestic work is what I had in mind for you. Housekeeping, cleaning, cooking. Cooking? Sure, cooking. I'm an old-fashioned guy. Well? Well, what are we gonna do, Doc? He's back there in the feed room. Now he thinks he's a commando. Have you tried a shock? Maybe a sudden fright. Boom! No, no, don't do that. <laughs> it scared you, didn't it? Oh, now, please, gentlemen, please. Time is the essence. What essence? Any essence. How do I know what essence? Mr. Marshall means we got to work fast. Now, listen, we've tried everything the doctor suggested, and nothing has worked. Now we've got to try that one last desperate measure. Oh, well, he ain't going to get whopped on the head, I'll tell you that right now. I'd rather he'd stay here in Pine Ridge thinking he was Buster V. Davenport. All right, then a man in a white coat will come and get him, and you'll only be able to see him on business day. He ain't going to get what? Yeah, but this is the last day. Unless I get that four minutes a day, I'll be out of my ear. And the country will be facing a crisis. Well, I'm just as patriotic as anybody else, but he ain't going to get what? But he will then think of Pine Ridge. Don't you want to be Pine Ridge's hero? Don't you want to give the country the rubber it needs? Don't you want your bust in the Hall of Fame? Bust where? Your bust in the Hall of Fame. Well, if it's got to be done. <laughs> Well, I, I'm his best friend. I reckon it's up to me to do it. Uh, this way, please. Well, now, here we are. It's just the very thing. Now, don't be squeamish. Just let him have it. One good one. Uh, Quiet, man. We're in enemy territory. Mr. Davenport. Mr. Davenport. Where are you? Da -da 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 -da. Mr. Davenport. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, there you are. Da -da 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 -da. Come on out of there, Mr. Davenport. We've got business to do. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, come on, Mr. Davenport. Stop that playing. Mr. Davenport. Where are you? Well, where are you? Abner, I know you're under there, Summers. Abner, get out from under that Pick summer. Up. Oh, don't do that. Get out from under there. I can't do it. I'm fixing to make an innovation. I strike it down. Oh, for goodness sake. Come on, I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you, too. How many men you got? How many are planes? How many tanks? Abner, I ain't got time to play soldier. I ain't Abner. I'm General Buster V. Davenport of the commando. All right, General, come on out. Maybe I'll surrender. I told you that's better. Yes, sir. Come in, Ed. Uh-oh. Well, <laughs> doggies, you're a commando, too, huh? Well, sort of. Uh, <laughs> uh, what do you want to talk to me about? Well, that's... Uh, hand me that seed catalog there. That ain't no seed catalog. Them's my secret orders. Oh, you know good and well that's a seed catalog. Did he? Not yet. Here, pick me out some nice flowers for my yard. Flowers? Yeah, and just keep looking at the book. Yeah, I think I sort of used to be in the flower business. I can recollect it. Uh, General, if you got a hit on the head with that hat on, would it hurt you any? Why, of course not. That's the reason I wear it. Oh, spirit of that. I mean, that's fine. Uh, some well, roses. ain't it terrible uncomfortable? It's awful heavy, awful heavy. Well, why don't you take it off and rest your head a few minutes? Can't do it. I'm on duty. Oh. Well, let me try it on. If it fits me, I might join your army. Why, sure. Yes, sir. Be proud to have you. So. Let's see now. Uh, what sort of flowers did you want? Lilies are nice. 
Oh, uh, lilies, huh? Yeah, let me in nice. Yes, sir, lilies is awful nice. And oh, I you still got the hat on. Let me try it on again. Uh, oh, excuse me, excuse me. I thought you'd done with it. Sure. Yes, sir, these nice assertions is awful pretty. I'm going in. Locked. Makes an awful pretty bed of flowers. I love that. Oh, Granny. What's the matter? Oh, my. What happened to Mr. Marshall? Here, Mr. Marshall. Mr. Marshall. Oh, my Mr. goodness. Marshall. Hey, did you hurt? Get him up there. Oh. What's the matter, Abner? Did you hurt your head? Uh, I don't think so. Well, come on. Let's get him up from here. Hi, doggies, Mom. We're in our store. Oh, well, I know where we're at. Hi, uh, Granny, she called me Lum. Hey, Doggies, what are we doing here, Lum? Abner, you just called me Lum. I've been calling you Lum for 50 odd years. I thought we was in Washington. You've got your memory back. He's got his memory back. Well, what are you folks doing here? Oh, well, Abner hello. just got his memory back. I don't know what he's talking about, but we ought to be in Washington looking after my rubber formula. It isn't necessary, Mr. Peabody. I have the chemist report right here. Mr. Peabody's invention definitely is not rubber. But it builds complete airplane runways in two hours. All you have to do is dump it on the ground and it hardens to a level mass. It's a new asphalt. Builds landing fields quicker than any other material. Builds landing fields. What about all them youngins have been eating that stuff for electric? <laughs> I reckon we'll have the only interior landing fields in the world. <laughs> and by the way, I have a very special message for you gentlemen. It's from the research board. It would like you to act as an advisory committee on farm problems. Advisory committee, huh? And what's more important, Mr. Edwards, you're going to serve your country as chairman of the board as a dollar a year man. Dollar a year man, did you hear that, Abner? <laughs> and Mr. Peabody is to be your assistant at $10,000 a year salary. $10,000 a year, did you hear that, Mom? Did you hear that, Mr. Marshall? Who's Mr. Marshall? Why, that's you. No, I'm Buster V. Davenport. A commando. Thank <laughs> you.